So I have this annex workspace here where I'm trying to debug a problem I'm having when running one of the schematics. And so what I do here is, for instance, I wanna generate a new React library. And so do annex generate, now React library. And we wanna give it a name, uh, testlib. And so this generates a new library under my libraries folder here. And now I wanna augment that library with storybook support. And so again, I can run the coding schematic. I do annex generate novel react storybook configuration. Let's quickly see what are the options there. So I can pass in the name and especially I wanna pass in the configure Cypress one, which actually leads to the wrong behavior. So I'm um, again, picking up here that command and passing name is equal to, I wanna add it to my test lib, which we just generated. Then I want to add here configure Cypress. I can actually just do a dry run because I'm not actually really interested in the final produced result, but rather what's going on. So we already see the behavior, which we don't expect here. And if you look at the files that are being produced here, you can see the storybook configuration files, and then what catches my eye is that Cypress project that NX configures for us, but it's being initialized by using TSLint. Now, if you look at my workspace here, I have a React workspace and I have it set up with ESLint by default. And so it's kind of weird that I get generated here with TSLint. So I really wanna look into what is going on when a schematic is being invoked. Now, what happens here actually is that I'm invoking that storybook configuration schematic and passing that configure Cypress flag. And so behind the scenes, that storybook configuration schematic invokes another schematic to produce basically that Cypress setup, which is also used in other scenarios. For instance, every app has already its default Cypress setup, which gets correctly produced by using ESLint, which I'm using here in my workspace. So in order to understand what is going on, let's first go to the Annex repository. And the repository has a packages folder, which contains the main libraries NX consists of. And so one of them is actually Cypress. And so if we dig into that library, we can go into source. And then we see basically some kind of uh, builders, migration scripts, plugins, and so on. And what we are interested in are those schematics. And so if I go in, I find actually that Cypress product setup. Now let's have a look first at the schema JSON. The schema JSON tells us basically what parameters that schematic supports. So we see the project which we pass in, we see also here a directory, and also what we are interested in here, especially is the linter. So let's move out again, and let's look, take a look here at the Cypress project. And now the schematic usually has a default function, which is the entry point of the schematic, which triggers the whole schematic, and it does basically contain instructions, like the main file of your schematic. And so here you see the options are getting passed in, and so I'm very interested here at what happens at this line. So I wanna see what options are actually being passed to my schematic when I run it. Now, the ideal part is to be able to debug that in my local setup, because there is actually where it's going wrong, right? When you get an exception, you wanna see what is actually happening, because that would allow you also to either fix your problem by just like adjusting your configuration, or to provide us on a normal repository a better support by already providing us with a proper stack trace or some more debugging information. So how can we actually debug that run of the schematic here in our workspace? So in Visual Studio Code, what you can do is, first of all, you need to make sure that you have that out attach set to on. And you can do that by going, for instance, to your preferences. And I tend to open it as a JSON file. So let's search out to attach. And you can now see here, I have that out attach set on. If that's not the case, definitely insert that line. Because what you can do now is you can find the actual script that's being invoked. And so we go into our node modules folder where we have actually installed that Cypress here under the novel folder, Cypress, source. Then we, again, we go to schematics. We find again our Cypress project. And now we should have that Cypress project JavaScript file. Now, obviously now it's JavaScript because it has been compiled. And if we now scroll down here a bit, we should actually find our default function. And here it is. So it has some different names here because it has been compiled to JavaScript, but mostly you can still figure out the flow of the program. And so what I wanna do is to directly set here a breakpoint. So you can just click here. And now we need to invoke the schematic again. Now, if you look at how we invoked it before, we actually invoked that NX binary. 
which is kind of a, a node script, right, which is in our node models folder, and then invoke that command generator. And we can do the exact same with the difference that we don't invoke an X directly, but rather we invoke node. And we pass it that inspect brk flag. Now we need to actually search for that NX binary here. So we can just go to node modules folder. We go to add normal CLI, and then we have a bin folder there and then an x.js file. And we can directly pass in the rest of the command. Now, if you click enter, you can see that Visual Studio Code switches into a debugging mode. You can see our schematic starts to run, it starts to ask questions. So we can just like provide the configuration we want to have. And now you can see that Visual Studio Code halted basically at the breakpoint, which I said before. And now we are actually in debugging mode. So I can go over the options. I can, for instance, see that for some reason that TSLint is being passed in rather than the ESLint, which I would expect. I can also step ahead to go to the next line, set further breakpoints, and in case even like adjust some of the code here to directly prove whether some quick fix could already work. And this kind of debugging techniques actually holds for all of the kind of the node programs which you execute locally. So you can also apply it in other contexts. So while this works in most of the cases, there's one thing you need to be aware of. The node debugger in this case attaches directly onto the node process it follows. And so therefore you were able to basically set breakpoints and Visual Studio Code will basically jump into those breakpoints then and show you the debugger window. Now this only works if the process that is running itself doesn't actually fork or spawn other sub-processes, because in that way you won't be able to follow those. Now luckily there is a tool called NDB, basically for node debug, and you can find it on their GitHub page. And this is a tool that should improve the debugging experience with Node.js. And so down here you see basically the installation instructions. You usually want to install those globally because you need them over and over again. And then in order to use that, you simply prefix your command with that NDB instead of Node directly. And now NDB will make sure that your whole debugging experience works in a better way. It will also follow sub-processes seamlessly.